We are live. We're live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Say good morning. Good this morning. Is, this is my darling boy, Reese. And who's it? We're live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good this morning. Is, we've got some back uh, stuff going on out. I don't yep. know why. We're good. We're good. All right. Can you please introduce who this is? This is Paddington. This is Paddington Bear, who lives in London. London, which is where we went to, didn't we? And do you want to tell everybody how we saw Paddington how many times? Two. 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 But we saw Paddington two how many times? I saw it five. And, and Rosie saw it three, four. I saw it four times, and Reese saw it five times. What do you think, Al, to Paddington Bear? I, he is one good-looking bear. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> there was Paddington two on the TV, but there was no sound. So I asked, that, does that mean I watched it six times? Yes, it could be. You watched it once with no sound, did you? All the way through with no sound? No. So you really watched it five times in a bit. Well, so uh, I'm going to put Paddington down for a minute here. He's going to sit on my knee there, okay? And you're going to stop mm. slurping the water. And um, so what we'd like to do today is, first of all, we'd like to apologise, I think, Alpha last week, because I think so many people had trouble last week, didn't they, seeing the, seeing us um, live, yes. Didn't we have, it was jumping around and jumping up and down and all the rest of it, and we didn't get to see it very well, or people didn't get to see it very well. So what we're doing today is we're going to have five minutes to talk with my darling boys. For everybody who doesn't know, this is my grandson. His name is, what's your name? Reese Astor? Reese Astor out there. And how old are you, Reese? Five. He's five years old. <laughs> Remember, you're going to have to watch this on YouTube. You don't want to be too silly, do you? You're five years old. And are you going to school soon? Yeah. What you what what grade will you be in? What grade will you be in at school? Not any grade. What will Kindergarten. You... Kindergarten. And here is Reese's mama just walked in the door, trying to be very ca careful and quiet. But as we know, say hello, mama, darling, because you're on camera. Mama. But mama. as we know, this is live. It's a live show, so anything can happen. And do you want to say anything to anyone before you off you go to play? And then you can come back I in a little know. bit. You don't know what to say? Do you want to say hello, everybody? Hello. And uh, I think it's time mm. to, to, to leave now. What do you think? Are you going to go off and see your mama? Okay. Climb over me. Say bye. See you in a little bit. Bye. See you in a little bit. So uh, about mm. quarter to 11. Climb over there. <laughs> you can come back in. So, see you later, alligator. See you later. All right, Al. <laughs> That's that. And... Um, I've no idea if you can see me properly or what you can see and so on because we had to do a bit of a makeshift thing here. Uh, is my head cut off nicely? Just a little bit. Let me let me just tilt it then a little bit. Mm. All right. Is that better? Yes, that's much yes, better. Yes, perfect. All right. So do we have anyone or has everybody given up on us? <laughs> no, we, have, we actually have a number of people watching now. We have a few questions already. Let's go. Let's go straight into the questions. First of all, though, I would like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Gregor, who is always, as always, at my right side. Good morning, Al, from Colorado. Good morning. Um, let's dive in then, shall we, with our first question? Sure. So Albertine has a question. Albertine. Uh, when Grey Eagle lived on Earth, he was a leader and peacemaker. Is he now a peace teacher is there anything he can teach us this moment? Uh, well, actually, when Greg, when Greg was on this earth, he was a shaman, which means that he was a healer and he was a shaman to his tribe and very, very well respected. 
uh, and I'm not sure that he would describe himself as a leader. I'm checking with him as I'm talking to you. And uh, <coughs> as always, there, there's always something that our spirit guides can teach us. And if we listen very carefully, there's always something uh, that we can learn from them. You might all be interested to know that there is a book that has already been written and just needs to be edited uh, by myself with Grey Eagle. And it's, uh, it's called, uh, the book is called Grey Eagle Speaks. And we are hopefully going to be publishing it fairly soon. Um, and this is Questions and Answers to Grey Eagle, and it's an amazing book because uh, the questions have to do with just about every spectrum uh, of um, life on this earth plane. Uh, every possible uh, question that you could ask about politics, about life, about relationships, about how people um you know interact with each other and so on you might see my daughter flitting behind me from time to time and um and that's right darling. and um so uh it's it's an amazing book it's so rich with wisdom and it's just an incredible incredible book and uh i hauled it out after i'd finished with um with the the new book uh, uh, a walk in the clouds i uh brought the Grey Eagle book out again and I'm in the process of editing that plus of course by by the end of this year we will have the I'm, I'm going to make a promise I'm going to promise you that we will have the recipe book and it will be out before Christmas and so um so that's as much as I can say about that but always if you if you you know, listen to those people in the spirit world. If you listen to your loved ones, if you li listen to your angels, whoever it is that you're listening to, as I listen to Grey Eagle, um, you can always, there's always something to learn on an everyday basis. Even the smallest of things we can learn on an everyday basis. Let's have a, another question now, shall we? Al? Yep. We have you, I'm sorry, for a hot one, awful moment I thought I'd lost because... I don't have the pictures. I can't see whether you're there or not. That's okay. So, Laurie asks. Good morning, Laurie. Uh, one uh, wondering about luck. Is it just that people don't tune into that quietest little voice they hear, or that they seem to thrive on throwing themselves into chaos continually instead of listening? Um, I, I think it's. <coughs> excuse me. I think it's both. I think that sometimes life, uh, because it's maybe because it's planned, because it's inevitability, I think life throws us a curveball. I think that there are certain things in life that we're meant to encounter. There are certain situations that we're meant to go through. All of these things are there, you know, so we talk about chaos, but, but through chaos comes so much learning and so much growth. Um, and, uh, you know, no matter how we might listen to our, that little voice in our head. Sometimes it's inevitable that we end up in in chaotic or distressing or difficult situations. I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to learn. We're here to grow, and that's why we choose to came to this come to this earth plane because we, you know, we definitely wanted uh, this learning process, and the learning process stretches us tremendously. Um, you know, the word trauma, and we all go through it from time to time. I don't think there's a human being on this planet who's ever escaped trauma. The word trauma simply means actually change. Uh, and uh, change is can be harrowing, it can be distressing, but it can always, always, always be um, a, a tool for self-growth and for learning if we use it, if we listen to that little voice. Our little voice, that little voice in our head, won't always help us to avoid the situation, but it will certainly help us to deal with the situation better. Uh, let's have another question now. So would you say, just to follow up that, so uh, luck, m most people, you know, view things, or some people view things as bad luck, as, uh, you know, as kind of this negative thing. So in your, in your mind, it's more of a challenge, correct? And, and how we yeah. kind of adjust to I think life is a challenge. So, certainly some people, for instance, some people always seem to have good luck on the horses and some people seem to have good luck choosing 
uh, um, husbands or, or, you know, that sort of thing. But I, I think it's really that it's the path that is, has been mapped out for us. I think some things are inevitable, uh, whether you might consider them lucky or unlucky. Some things, some things in life we're meant to go through, they are inevitable. And then there are other things which, um, uh, because of the decisions we've made, because of decisions we've made in the past, uh, it's inevitable that we're going to encounter certain things in the future. And, you know, I mean, also, I think, you know, as human beings, we can be very vulnerable and very sensitive. And we don't always listen to our own heart, never mind to listen to our angels or to listen to those loved ones of ours in the spirit world. We, you know, we, we can tend to make really, really bad decisions, perhaps even for the right reasons we make bad decisions. And that's all part of life as well. So I, I don't think it's a question of bad luck or good luck. I think it's a question of, you know, I think, uh, to be honest, I think the luck that we all have is being on this earth and having this fantastic experience. I mean, and I don't even think that's luck either. I think that's destiny as well. But if you want to call it luck, that's fine. And if you want to, you know, sort of live your life on the roll of a dice, the, you know, that's, we all make our choices. I will tell you this, though, talking rolling of the dice. I remember I was in um, uh, Las Vegas many, many years ago, and I was with a group of people who were being uh, a bit obnoxious in a way and who um, had uh, uh, tried to use my gifts, my talents, um, in, in a very negative way. I won't go into it any more than that. However, uh, Grey Eagle just decided that he would intervene this one particular time. And uh, in fact, I was not intent on playing. The, the, I didn't even know how to play the dice. But I remember him saying, you know, pick up those dice and let's roll them. And we, uh, and we, he and I, uh, rolled the dice and rolled the dice and rolled the dice again. And all of a sudden, I noticed that there was a huge crowd of people around the table. I did not know what it was that I was doing, but Greg knew perfectly well, and he was controlling those dice, and we won that night uh, a lot of money that someone else had lost on my behalf, believe it or not, not with my permission, I might add, but we won all the money back, and we, we were able to pay for the trip uh, through the money that we won. So we weren't actually um, uh, profiting we were just simply gaining back what had been stolen from us, and Greg just took it, uh, took it from me, and uh, we rolled those dice, and we we won that money back. Amazing though it sounds, weird story I know. Let's, let's have our next question now before we get into more weird, weird stories and encounters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have Light Switch uh, asks a, a question. Light Switch, I hope you I hope you lit up. I hope you light. <laughs> The, the whole place. The person asks, I'm not sure if it's a male or female, uh, do I have any angels around me? Well, you know, if you've, if you've got your light switched on, I'm sure you do. Um, <laughs> do we all have our angels around us. Uh, you know, all of us, uh, we have our angels, we have our loved ones in the spirit world. You know, very often uh, I'll talk to a mother or a father or a sister or whoever in the spirit world, or I'll talk to a child in the spirit world and and they will often refer to themselves as the angel of their mother or father or they you know they'll often say to me tell rosemary tell her i'm her angel they don't mean an angel in the sense of uh, those uh, beings who work purely and simply for god what they're meaning to say is we love them very much and we're guiding them in in hopefully in the right way if they listen so we all have our angels around us, light switch. Keep that light switched on and keep it bright. That's my suggestion to you. Um, Let's have another question now. Uh, Jeanette has a related question. Good morning, Jeanette. Uh, she asks, how can you discern if you're listening to yourself or an angel or an ancestor? Oh, well, uh, that's, that's such a good question, Jeanette, because when I first started doing this, my, you know, my skepticism, which I still have, I'm tremendously skeptical in so many ways. My skepticism was such that, you know, I would ask that, well, how do I know? How do I know if I'm not fooling myself? How do I know I'm really listening or talking or what have you? And what I try to do is apply the three time rule 
if you hear it once, that's okay, accept it, move on. If you hear the same thing twice, pay attention. If you hear it three times, simply accept it and move forward with it, accept it until or unless you're proved, you know, it's proved that it, it wasn't what you thought it was. Always be skeptical, but try to be open-minded. Let's have another question. I'm hoping my battery on this little thing is going to uh, keep going, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, so Olivier, or I'll, I think it's O L I V I E R, Olivier. Uh, yeah. Olivier. Uh, whatever. Anyway, yeah. whoever you are, darling. <laughs> um, uh, they say, why the clairvoyance? These feelings are often associated with something negative, such as an accident or death, and no beautiful things in life. Oh. So I guess, you know, I guess, you know, it's those. When you get those 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 kind of messages, are they? Uh, I guess they're saying they're often associated with negatives um, and not. I, I I so disagree. You've been going to the wrong people, or you've been listening to the wrong people. Uh, I am clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentient. I'm all, all of those things and more besides. I see, I hear, I sense. I'm aware in every way. Uh, not just, um, th I think you, you and, and the word clairvoyance or clairaudience just literally means seeing further than or hearing further than the ordinary hearing of the ordinary sight. It does not mean seeing the future or telling the future. It means seeing further than. So I see further than the ordinary vision. I'm able to see those in the spirit world. I see, I hear more i hear further than i can hear sound much further much further distance so i can hear those in the spirit world and so on so we have to be careful how we use that word clairvoyance but i think what you're talking about here is you're talking about when when someone like me tells the future which we do but what i like to do when we're talking about the future and i'm giving people uh, uh you know future instances and i see clearly about certain things that happen in the future i always do this in a way where i like to give people uh choices and i give people choices as well if you do this and this this might happen if you do this and this this might happen so everybody has a choice of free will now that doesn't mean that you do have a choice of free will it it, it might mean that there are certain things which are inevitable and that will happen but my experience here is that most of what I see for the future, when we're talking about the future, is number one, most importantly, very constructive, uh, very, very constructive help and advice. So that, for instance, if we do see that there is, you know, possibility of somebody being sick, the very constructive advice is get to the doctor now and do this and this or whatever it is that you need to do. Because... Uh, being able to see into the future means that you can actually help people and guide people in what they should do about those inevitables that are coming to them. But there are so many more wonderful and, and, and interesting things to, to see about the future. For instance, you know, I could see my grandson before he was born. I knew I knew that he was going to be a boy. Those of you who are reading a walk in the clouds will know all about that and will know all about clairvoyance and there is a fabulous fabulous story in that book about a woman who told me my future first of all she told me all about myself and then she told me about my future and uh, we're talking 25 or 30 some years ago and it's only just very recently that what she the, one of the things that she said to me, the last thing that she said to me actually came true, and it was a wonderful thing that she told me. So please don't look at clairvoyance in a negative way. Yes, it can be a bit scary when you, we might see something that is, you know, that might be awful that is happening to you. But if we do see this, if I do tell people this, it's for a reason. It's to prepare them, to help them, to guide them in how to deal with this thing that's going to happen to them. It, it, and and if, if, you're, uh, if you've heard someone tell you or someone has told you something that is negative or sounds negative, you're going to the wrong people, darling. You're listening to the wrong people because that is not what clairvoyance is about and that is not what we do. Those of us who are real, I should say. Let's have our next question, Al. 
just to follow that up, Rosemary. Yeah. When when, when things uh, come up uh, that you tell people that they're not um, either super comfortable about or uh, they know that you know change is inevitable in one way, either self directed or change coming from outside factors. Uh, how, how would you recommend people uh, look at that in a positive way instead of saying, oh, woe is me, this is going to be horrible, like that kind of thing. So how, how could they kind of turn it into a constructive thing? A positive. Yeah, a positive. Well, I think it, it, it greatly depends on who, who it is who told you these things. I think the first thing you have to do is to ask yourself, well, do they really know what they're talking about? Uh, is this really, you know, can, can I believe this person? Because if you hear these things from someone who is real, that person is not only going to tell you that something like this happened, they're also going to guide you into how you deal with it and what you do with it and to help you to look at this in a positive way, in a good way. So if you're going to someone who just dumps this information on you and then leaves you to fend for yourself, you're not going to the right person. And I wouldn't, and if somebody does that, you would not believe a word they say. So, you know, I think that the, the, how you can help yourself, how we can help ourselves is to make sure we go to the right person in the first place and to not listen to people who just will just tell you the doom and gloom stuff and then not even advise you or help you how to deal with it. Um, I think when you hear something, or even if you sense something yourself that appears to be negative, you always have to step back. And if it is a negative, it, if it really does seem to be a negative, there's always a positive way to deal with the negative, and that is to just look at it and see how you can turn it around. Remember we've talked before, attitude is everything. Your attitude, the frame of mind, the way you go into something, the way you deal with something, whether it's on a positive level or on a negative level we we are al i know i think it's a perfect time to tell people that we are going to have some short uh videos i think that anybody can join in with and we are going to be talking about these things and we are going to be helping people and guiding people into this is aside from this uh, what we're doing here we're going to do some more youtube stuff and we are going to help people and guide people in a way that they can deal with these issues that come up on a daily basis the Grey Eagle book that I talked about, Grey Eagle Speaks, is also an amazing thing because when we ask a question, for instance, about, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think. So, you know, when people are against other people, when people are discriminate, you know, they're, they're, they're indiscriminate or they're, they discriminate, discriminate against other people. What is Grey Eagle's advice? When we read his advice, it gives us a whole different slant and a whole different look on how we should be looking at things. So that's what we're going to be trying to do, right? How we're going to be helping people to have a different slant on things, a different look at the situations that come up for them in their lives. And we're going to be doing that, I think, on a on a weekly basis. We'll we'll let you all know when that happens. But I'm still in New York at the moment. I am actually flying home on Saturday. My grandson isn't happy about it, but my puppy will be so thrilled, I'm sure. And my poor friend, Mary Lou, who's had to deal with me. I've been sick this last week, uh, having traveled and having dealt with all the awful flight stuff from last week. I ended up uh, in bed for three days and um, I don't know if anybody can hear. I'm still a bit croaky. And my ear is still a bit, this ear is still a bit sensitive, but... Anyway, I'm flying out on Saturday, so we'll get back to normal and get back to, you know, what we're supposed to be doing as soon as I'm back. So next week, by next week, we shall have some sort of an agenda as to what we're doing with the lessons and with the YouTube stuff, right, Al? Correct. Yes, definitely. And we, and we, we may start the, um, uh, the Attitude, Everything is Attitude series um, as early as, as next week or the week after. Yeah. Um, and we're looking forward to talking to people and hearing about their experiences and, and uh, like you said, hopefully helping people. It's, it's, uh, it's literally know. going to be people are, will be able to talk to us, even uh, sort of give us a situation that we can help them with and we can you know, talk about how with your attitude you can, you can turn things around or you can help things to become better and more positive and so on because not every situation in life is a positive situation, but every situation in life can have positive 
uh, you know, elements to it. So even the most negative, the most awful situation, we can bring light to and we can help with. And that's what our intention is going to be with the Attitude is Everything series. Uh, let's have another question, shall we? Okay, we have... Uh, let's scroll through. We have a couple of comments. Uh, your grandson is beautiful. Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> now Paul said something. I'm just trying to find it quickly in the stream. Um, I, now I can't find it. He's this, uh, an English phrase it was. Uh, uh, let's see. He, it's, he said he is the spit of your mouth, an English expression. The spit of what? He said he is the spit of your mouth. I don't yeah. know, Paul. That that's an English, English, English expression, he said. Well, um, yes. Hello. Hey. Hello again. <laughs> We're talking about you. We're <laughs> talking about you. Like you have to, you know, nip off and come back in a bit. Keep going with the questions, shall yep. we? Yeah. And uh, uh, the just to, to clarify, Olivier uh, did, did say Yay. thank you very much. That's the one who asked the question about clairvoyance. Uh, said thank you very much for your fascinating books and your generosity. Um, K, uh, RK said, uh, hi, Rosemary, we're in the UK thinking of you and it's only been a week ago. I know, it's so awful. <laughs> so I miss them so much, but they promised me they'll come next year, so we'll see. Oh, that would be great, right? Will they keep their promise? <laughs> it's taken them 18 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, all right. Um, so, uh, we have uh, Denise asks... Um, a, 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 a very a, a simple question. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a simple answer, but how can I help people? She would like to know. How can I oh, help people? Do you know, I love it when people ask that question. Uh, and there are a trillion ways that all of us can help. Uh, you can help on a daily basis by when you go to the supermarket, just smile at someone or offer to carry somebody shopping or if you see somebody struggling across the road. You know, I can remember once in New York City, of all places, was sitting in a car. Uh, it, it was a fancy limousine, actually. And I saw this man trying desperately to walk across two or three lanes of a very busy road. And uh, he got partway across and the traffic lights uh, turned green and all the traffic was honking and so on and so forth and I just leapt out of the car and I was lucky because I was in the car that you know the driver was there for me so I was fortunate in that and I shouted said to the driver stay where you are and I went right into the middle of this really really busy road and I just took hold of this poor man who was bent over he was quite old and he was shuffling along trying to shuffle along and and I just put my hand up to the traffic on both ways and gave them, gave them, uh, as, as uh, Reese will tell you, the hard stare, which is what they do in Paddington too. They give the hard stare. The bear gives the hard stare. And he gives the hard stare to people who are being a bit rude. And it's about mind your manners is the hard stare. And I am perfect at that because I've had this hard stare for years and years. And I just put my hand up here and there. And, and the majority of the people in their cars just sat and waited and realized this was a situation that they were going to have to wait on. And it took us ages. I think the traffic lights turned twice before I could get this poor man across the road and um, finally managed to get him to the other side, tried to encourage him to get in the car so I gave him a ride somewhere or another, but he wouldn't have it. Uh, and I left him shuffling. There's always ways. You can always, there are lots of ways to help people. If you really, really want, to do something really a little more than that, uh, go to the nearest burns unit in your your children's hospital or any hospital at all, because any hospital will have a children's unit. Go to you know go to read uh, you know go and offer to read to people. Go to the library in a hospital. Uh, go to the old folks home that's near you and offer to take people out or drive them somewhere. There are so many, many things that we can do. Uh, if you put your mind to it, I'm sure you can find something. But you know something, darling, I'd love for you to write to me or let us know, uh, perhaps on one YouTube uh, thing, what it is that you choose to do. But simply smiling at people in the street is so helpful because there are so many people in this world who have no one 
to give them a friendly word. They live on their own, they walk on their own, they're lonely people, they're sad people, and just a smile will make a, a whole difference to a person's life. Al, do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> we, have a, we have a comment from Patricia. Yeah. Uh, we can help other people by being nice to each other and helping our seniors at times, and just give your smile away when you come in contact with whomever. Just be kind. Yes. You know what Grey Eagle says? And this is for um, who was it to us? I think it was Alberto who asked, uh, what, can Grey Eagle teach us something right this moment? And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'll probably say it until the day I die, and then I'll still be saying it after. Grey Eagle says, our world, your world, he refers to me, your world, this earth plane. Your world needs gentleness. And just laying your hand on someone's arm in a, in a fashion of gentleness, it's helping people, helping someone at the supermarket to load their groceries, something like that. Smiling at the girl behind the till and asking if she's had a nice day. Just you know, treating other people as if they matter and treating people like they're human beings and giving your smile away. My smile is almost permanent on my face, unless, of course, I'm frowning and giving the hard stare. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> Let's have our next question, shall we? <laughs> so, uh, Lori uh, has a, a comment slash question. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the name. Lori. Lori, yes. Yes. When my son was born 26 years ago, there was an explosion of gold light in the delivery room. Was that his soul, an angel, or life force? It was very powerful. Oh, that was the energy that came with your son, I'm sure. And that was the joy that you experienced, that you were actually able to visit, visibly see the joy of the spirit world um, welcoming uh, a new soul, a new being uh, into this life of ours, which gives us so much. It takes so much from us, but it gives us so much more than it ever takes from us. Uh, how lucky you were to see that. Wow. Uh, next question. So Julia asks, and I, Julia. I, I looked, Julia. Julia, yeah. I looked this up because I didn't know what it was. Um, uh, has Rosemary ever ever visited the Hall of Akashic Records? Akashic. Uh, I haven't actually. Uh, you know, so many other things to do, but no, I haven't. Okay. Um, that, that was easy. <laughs> Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> is, there any, is there any specific reason why she's asking? No, she didn't say. But Julia, maybe you can you could uh, follow it up with another question and uh, good, or even a comment or something. Or comment, yeah. Uh, so we uh, we have Denise also has a comment. Yes, go ahead. About, about that kind of gentleness and kindness that you're talking about. Uh, she says, "I try to always, though I'm human and not always successful." to give of myself, but always remember that you must take care of yourself as well. I think it's a really, <coughs> I think it's a really important thing. I actually teach my students, Al, as you very well know, I teach my students to be selfish. I think there's nothing wrong with being selfish, provided that you do not walk all over somebody else to do it. You do not hurt someone else deliberately in the process. Selfishness means basically that you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your own spirit, you're taking care of your own soul, you're feeding yourself. And I think until you can learn to be selfish with yourself in the important ways, I don't mean selfishly take the, you know, the best, the nicest cake off the tray. I don't mean selfishly push somebody out of the way because you want some material thing that you don't want somebody else to have. I don't mean that kind of selfishness. I mean being gentle to yourself, being kind to yourself, being selfish with yourself and doing things that make you feel good and are healing for you. It's the most important thing because until you can heal yourself, until you can be kind to yourself, until you can be gentle with yourself, it's very hard for you to be truly, honestly, kind and gentle and generous with other people. You've got to experience things for yourself first and then you become, uh, when you are... Uh, uh, unselfishly giving to somebody else you, it, it's a richer experience for you and it's a richer experience for the person you're giving to uh, 
Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a hard thing I know for myself to uh, do, to kind of give back, to make sure you, you give back to yourself. You've got to feed yourself, basically. And if, you don't, if you don't feed yourself, you don't replenish your energy, you'll be, you'll be, you know, worn out and tired and be of no use to anybody whatsoever if you are not fed properly in a spiritual sense, if you're not fed and nurtured, and only you can do that, if you're not fed and nurtured yourself, you'll be no good to anybody else at all. You'll be worn out before you, before you know it, and you'll be exhausted. I've seen healers. I've seen healers who, with the best intentions in the world, give and give and give themselves selfishly, unselfishly, and become more and more sick and more tired and physically more worn out by themselves and then, then then they're no use to anybody else and then they're the ones who need the healing more than anyone else you you just can't do that you have to you know when i first started this work and especially as a healer i mean i was called out here there and everywhere and i felt that i really should be, because of the gift i really should share it and i really should you know be at you know everybody's beck and call because after all who who doesn't want to share this gift but I learned very quickly and, and painfully in a way, I learned to say no. It's that little word no. And you've got to say no sometimes in order to preserve yourself and to give to yourself and not wear yourself out completely. So, you know, that, that little word no is a good word. You need to learn it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a work in progress. Yeah, I know that. Oh, boy, do I ever know that. <laughs> you know that better than anyone, yes. I do, I do. <laughs> All right, let's have our next question, shall we? Um, so uh, Julia followed up. Uh, she said, no reason. I just wondered what it's like there. Uh, can Grey Eagle take you there? Is it a real place? Um, this book of uh, the book of life, essentially. Is um, well... Oh, every, different people have different opinions on it. Different people uh, see it differently, like like with everything else. I mean, I can tell you that Disney World's a real place and somebody else will say, no, it's not, it's all pretend. I mean, it depends on a person's point of view and it depends on the way that you look at things. You know, could Grey Eagle take me there? If he wanted to take me there, I'm sure he would take me there. Do I want to go there particularly? No, because here's, here's the thing about me that perhaps you know might help people to understand me a little bit better if ever you can understand anybody like me um uh, people talk about reincarnation all the time and i know it's a very important subject for a lot of people but for me it isn't important at all because i i'm i'm not so interested or so involved in what i did in a previous life or previous lives uh I'm much more involved and, and much more interested in the life that I am living in this moment in time, because that's what matters to me. I am sure that, you know, that there are people who would disagree uh, and you, people are entitled to, to their opinions. But for me, rather than spending hours and hours and lifetimes of, of trying to figure out who I was and what I was and what I did in a previous life, I'm trying to learn my lessons today and living in the now. I'm trying not to look too much into the future. I'm living in the now because the now is the most important thing for me. Don't know if that helps at all. Uh, Al, what do you think about that? Are you interested in who you might have been or could have been or should have been two centuries ago? Or are you in the now? Are you in the moment? Are you living in the moment, living in the now and trying to learn from the now? I would say, I'm living in the now, you know, I, I've never uh, been uh, super interested in, you know, if I've been something else in the past, I, I am interested in the universe and what's out there and, yes. you know, exploration of that, but not so much. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be and I'm learning what I need to learn in this moment. Uh, I've had experiences, you know, when we talked about, uh, I think it was um, last week or the week before, what well, we've talked before about astral travel. And I've had experiences of going back in time for me personally and possibly seeing a life 
or, or lives that I've led before in the past. Um, but do they teach me anything about myself today? Uh, you know, I'm interested, I'm fascinated, I'm curious, but if I'm going to spend my time wondering about what I did in Victorian times, I'm missing perhaps a moment right in, in front of me, right in the now, that might be more valuable to me. So I'd much prefer to live in the now, even though the past certainly is fascinating. And, you know, when you talk about the universe, the universe is the now for me, because exploring it, astral traveling, going off, wondering what it's like, and, and all of those other the trillions of questions that we have, for me, are in the now. They're in the moment. They're in the now. And I like to grasp the now and learn from the now as opposed to wasting my now by looking, you know, too far in the past. And I also think, you know, there are a lot of people out there, just, uh, just to, to clarify this, there are a lot of people out there who are still hooked on, you know, 20 years later, how they were treated when they were kids. They're still hooked on the relationship that didn't work out. They're still reveling almost in what happened in the past and when you revel too much in the past you are missing the now and you're missing a potential wonderful future and sometimes it's hard to let go of the past because there's so much pain and hurt in it but at the same time you know this is where we're going to be doing our attitude is everything thing uh and uh you know talking about how we can climb out of those past hurts and pains and how we can let go of those past hurts and pains because all they do very often is hold us back and prevent us from living in the now and potentially having a great and you know fabulous uh, future the the past is really a great reflection to shape to understand and like who you are and to shape uh, help shape decisions you make and understand the decisions you make, the reactions you have. Right? I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying that people should ignore the past, not by any means, because we learn from our past and we learn from our experiences. But I'm talking about those people who just simply can't let go of the hurts and the pains of the past. And they, they sort of seem to be so steeped in the past and so reveling in the past that they're missing the now. Uh, of course, we need the past. We need our experiences because they're what teach us and they're what help us to move forward. But, you know, living in living in the past and reveling in the past is not a good idea. It, you, living in the now, to me, seems to be so much more an important thing. I don't want to miss a moment of my grandson. I don't want to miss a moment of my daughter. I don't want to miss a moment for me either. You know, I've got much less time here than so many other people. And, you know, I want to make the most of the time that I have and I want to learn and I want to find joy. And I do find joy because attitude is everything. <laughs> um, we, we are just as a heads up, we're close to time. Um, do you want to? Um, uh, I, I'd like to, do, do you mind if I disappear for one second then and get my grandson back in? I can promise him he could come in at the end. Hold on. Yes. What he really wants to do is, once this show's over, he wants to go into YouTube and watch himself. <laughs> <laughs> Quite rightly. Hi. Hi. Come on, sit on Rosie's knee. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What, do you want to tell people what you were just doing? We, I was playing a game. What game were you playing? Sorry. So, oh, I like the game, sorry. Shall we, tell, shall we tell everyone what game we were playing with Emma the other day? Or with it, was it with Mama? When we, we were playing... You want to tell everybody? How we played Monopoly and Mosey La lost. <laughs> I lost, didn't I? And Emma yeah. won, and you came second. I came second. You did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, where, do you want to tell everyone where we're going now? Because the show is almost ended. Where are we going now? I don't know. We're going to get a big, giant, big uh, a burger. We're going to <laughs> burger bear. Are we going to have a big giant burger? Aren't we? 
Well, for all of you who don't eat meat, sorry, but we have <laughs> a big giant burger. <laughs> and we can get a, a veggie burger. Right? You do have to wash hands, yes, uh, before we eat. So um, do you want to say bye-bye to Al? Bye-bye. Bye, Al. Bye-bye, Al. Nice. Bye. Could we do this nicely now, please? Not be Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Enjoy your, your big hamburger. Can you say bye-bye to everybody else? Bye-bye, everybody else. And do you know what Moses says when we say goodbye? We say, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, will you all please have a very... Thank you for joining me. We've had a lot of fun. Please, please, please have a very, 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 very blessed, blessed day. Wait. And off you go, go wash your hands, please. <laughs>